Hello awesome people, welcome to Smartphone Tutorials. It's time for another ROM review. Let's review Vertexus Blizzard 7.1.1. Alright guys, so as you know, I've been reviewing a lot of ROMs for this device, the Redmi Note 4, but this one's a little special because it is a pure Android version, that is AOSP, Android Open Source Project, and it doesn't have any additions, very few tweaks, so it is a near stock Android experience, and that is the reason you should give it a shot. Now, if you look at the screen, I'm going to the ROM opening page or the first page of the ROM where all the details about this ROM should be mentioned on XDA developers. Now as you can see the name of the ROM is Vertex and it aims to provide simple and enhanced near stock AOSP experience with very few cherry picked or hand picked features. The only bug is FM is not working properly that should be fixed soon. Now you will need G apps, the ROM file and the firmware to install this particular ROM and obviously you need to have 50% battery TWRP installed which requires an unlocked bootloader and make sure you back up all your data before you do this. So let's go to TWRP. Considering you've downloaded all the files and kept it on your device or copied it to your device, first things first, once you are booted up in TWRP, we will wipe. So go to advanced wipe, wipe Dalvik system data and cache. Now once the wipe is complete, you need to go ahead and install these three files. Now, as you see, I'm just installing the gapps and the ROM file. That's because I've already flashed the CM14.1 firmware, but I would recommend you to flash that file. Now this installation will take about say five to 10 minutes. So please be patient while all the files are installed. And after that, you need to wipe cache and Delvic to be safe and then simply reboot system. Now, as I've been always saying, the first boot will take anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes because it sets everything up and as you can see, it comes with a pure Google boot animation, which in my opinion is one of the most beautiful boot animations. And as you can see, double tap is working and as I've chosen to install Pico Google Apps, that is the you know, smallest or one of the smallest forms of Google Apps, there's not much installed in this particular ROM. Now, as you can see, the Android version is one of the latest versions, 7.1.1. So, of course, this particular ROM comes with all the Android 7.1 goodies. We will discuss that a little later. Now, as I said earlier, this ROM comes with pure Android and substantum support. So, theming is also available. And let's check the features. Wi-Fi is working. Let's move to Bluetooth. Let's give it a shot and I guess it's working fine. So I have been through, you know, the thread and all the posts that all the users have made and it seems to be a pretty stable ROM. Now the SIM cards are not inserted, but I was using it and the dual SIM is working, hotspot is working, display brightness, everything seems to be working fine. The battery life is say a little less than what you get on a stock MIUI ROM. The VR option is also available in display settings. Let's go ahead and see what else we have. So as you can see, the settings menu is pretty clean and neat. there's not many tweaks like resurrection remakes or darkness defined. Uh, you know, all the other ROMs have their own share of tweaks in the settings menu. But if you look at this ROM uh, and if you look at the RAM usage, it's extremely low. 2.1 gigabytes is free. So that's a very good sign especially for people who have the two gigabyte variant as you can see you have the pixel soft keys over here so you can turn them on or off I choose to keep them off because it doesn't make sense to use on-screen buttons when you have you know soft keys at the bottom if you move further down into settings you have security accounts all the usual stuff fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine I've not set it up but yes I tested it and it's working perfectly fine all right, so moving forward, if we have a look at the other options, at the bottom you should have System UI Tuner. So it gives you a little bit of customization. You know, it's not as elaborate or as detailed as some other custom ROMs. 
and again that's the idea behind this rom right pure android with not many options and just keep it simple with substantum support so what we're going to do next is we're going to have a look at cpu z and while we do that just look at the smoothness of the launcher it's it's just beautiful so there we are we are in cpu z it's a top end variant of course with 4 gigabytes of ram and 64 gigabytes of internal storage i did not observe any heating or you know any crashing or any random problems with this particular rom which should stop you from using this as a daily driver yes the camera quality is you know slightly less and you know slightly less compared to miui but look at the amount of sensors and all of them are working the proximity the gyro everything seems to be working perfectly fine let's clear the memory and let's move to enter to to see some benchmark numbers now as a part of our rom review Sixty-one thousand four hundred and ninety-two is the score, and obviously, if you look at the comparison, it sits at the bottom because there are a lot of other devices which perform better. In fact, the Redmi Note Three performs better when it comes to benchmark numbers. Next up, let's move to Geekbench. Let's quickly run the benchmark and see what scores we get. All right, the bench is complete. 848 single core and 3256 multi core. So the score has been pretty stable across all 7.1 custom ROMs for this particular device. Now, if you look at the temperature after a benchmark, it's around 40 to 45 degrees. That's really, really sweet. You know, it's it's not heating at all. And last but not the least, talking about this ROM, Substrantum support. Yes, Substrantum. So. If we go ahead and download a theme, let's see if it compiles without any error. So let's give it a shot. There you go. The theme has been downloaded. And let's go to Substrantum. Let's apply. Okay, let's hide the outdated themes. DNA Dark theme. That's the name of the theme. Let's apply everything at once. Let's see if we get any errors. It'll take a while to apply and you know compile everything and install the overlay. Looks like we're good. Beautiful black. I've always I've always had a thing for black themes. I don't know why, but they just look beautiful. It makes more sense on AMOLED displays or OLED displays. But yep, even on LCD displays, the black theme looks beautiful. So that was the ROM review for Redmi Note 4 vertex wrong if you like the video like share and subscribe stay tuned for more amazing videos goodbye